Got some questions here on amino acids, amides, and chirality. So if you want to have a go at these, the link to the questions is in the description. So we'll download the questions, have a go, and then watch the video for the answers. Question one, which of the following statements is our, our correct? So basically, we've got to identify the functional groups. So if I just highlight the functional groups, so we've got here, that's a secondary amine group. We've got this group here, that's a ketone. We've got this group here, which is a primary alcohol. So which of those statements is correct? The molecule contains an amine group. Yes, it does. The molecule contains a carboxylic acid group. No, it doesn't. The molecule contains an amide group. No, it doesn't. So only one is correct. So the answer was D. So question two, aspartic acid I've drawn up there. We've got to come up with the products of the reactions between excess sodium hydroxide, excess hydrochloric acid, and excess ethanol with conch H2SO4. So part A, which part are parts of the molecule can react with sodium hydroxide? It's the carboxylic acid bits. So the OH turns into O minus Na plus. You don't actually need these charges, by the way, but uh, I always show them. Next one, excess hydrochloric acid. So what part of the molecule can react with hydrochloric acid? It's the amine part. So the nitrogen, the lone pair on the nitrogen is going to accept that H+, plus, so that'll become an NH3 plus group. And then the Cl- minus will just be tagged alongside. And then finally, excess ethanol and conch sulfuric acid. So we need to be thinking esterification. So what part of the um, aspartic acid can react with the alcohol? Well, it's the carboxylic acid parts. There's a bonus mark, actually, for this because, remember, this, uh, these acidic conditions will supply H plus ions to the reaction mixture and the lone pair on that nitrogen can accept one. So there's the structure there. So there's one mark going for getting the ester bit right. There's a bonus mark for getting that bit right there. Question three now. So we've got to come up with the shape and the angles around atoms A and B and give reasons for our answers using electron repulsion theory. So if we look at atom A first, so that nitrogen, I'm just going to draw it up here, so NH2, and then we've got to bond up to the that carbon there. Remember there's a lone pair on that nitrogen, so if we count up the electron regions, we've got one, two, three, four. We've got three bonding regions, one lone pair, so the shape associated with that is pyramidal. The angle, the bond angle around that nitrogen, well, four electron regions, 109.5, but we have to take off two and a half degrees because that lone pair, bond and pair repulsion is greater, and so it actually pushes these bonds closer together. So the angle would be 107. So just covering all bases, angle 107 degrees, shape pyramidal, Y, three bonding regions, one lone pair, and then just that bit about the increased repulsion from the lone pair bonding pair, which is greater than bonding pair to bonding pair. So if we move on to atom B, that's this carbon with the double bonded O, the single bonded O, is that H on the end there, and then that bond to that carbon there. So around this carbon, we've got one, two, three, bonding regions, no lone pairs, so we're going to get equal repulsion from the three bonding regions. Remember, we class a double bond as just a bonding region, and so there's no sort of extra repulsion. So the shape associated with that would be trigonal planar, and the angle would be 120 degrees. So I'll just write it like that. Angle 120, shape trigonal planar, three bonding regions, equal repulsion. Next part of the question, student adds excess aqueous sodium hydroxide to a sample of solid serine, purifies the mixture to get the pure ionic organic product. Draw the structure of the ionic product obtained. So if we just have another look at serine, so what part of the molecule can react with sodium hydroxide? It's just the carboxylic acid group. This alcohol group doesn't react with sodium hydroxide. And the second bullet point, outline the steps a student could carry out to obtain a pure sample of the organic product from the reaction mixture. 
So they're going to have to do a recrystallization. And so the steps involved with that, I'll write all this up, but I'll just say it now. So they would filter the solution using reduced pressure, and then they would recrystallize. So they'd dissolve it in a minimum volume of hot solvent. They'd cool it back down. That would allow the pure crystals to form. They'd filter it again under reduced pressure, and then they'd wash it with cold solvent and then allow it to dry. Now, to be fair, the Mark scheme only really wanted to see filter and recrystallize in the student answers. There's only three marks going for it, but you know we might as well use this opportunity. If there were more marks going for it, you'd have to say all of the stuff that I've said there. So filter using reduced pressure, recrystallize by dissolving in the minimum volume of hot solvent. That minimum's key. Cool it back down, reduce pressure filtration again, wash with cold solvent, and then allow it to dry. Okay, so the next question, identify the chiral centers present in this molecule. So we've got one there. Remember, we're looking for carbon atoms with four different groups attached. So that one there, there's another one. There's one there, and there's one there. So there's four all together. Next part, it can be broken down by alkaline hydrolysis. Draw the structures of all the products of the alkaline hydrolysis. So the first thing we'll do is look at, well, which bonds can be broken um, under hydrolysis. So it's ester bonds and amide bonds that can be broken. Well, we've got amide bonds in this molecule. So there's one there. So that's going to break. And also that one there. Okay, so this part of tab toxin is going to create this. So when this amide bond breaks, the NH group becomes an NH2 group. And because it's alkaline hydrolysis, we get the O- minus where the carboxylic acid hydroxyl group was. And this part of the molecule, so at this end here, we get the O- minus group, so the carboxylate group. Nothing happens here. That doesn't change. So remember, this ring sort of sprung open, so the NH2 groups formed there, just like we had here, and this becomes a carboxylate group. Question four now, so more reactions of amino acids. So sodium carbonate solution, what part of serine is it going to react with? Well, just the carboxylic acid group. It doesn't react with the OH group, and it certainly doesn't react with the NH2 group. So that's what you'd get there. And then here we've got effectively an alcohol, sulfuric acid, carboxylic acid group. So it's esterification. So the ester is going to form here between the carboxylic acid and the alcohol. But just bear in mind what we said earlier on in this paper. You've got acidic conditions. And so the NH2 group will accept a proton from the sulfuric acid. So Basically, the way the marks work here, you've got a mark for that, a mark for that, and you've got the bonus mark for remembering that that happens there. And then finally, suggest a use for the organic compound from reaction two. So this is an ester, so they're going to be used as perfumes, flavorings, or fragrances. Next part of the question, reagent and conditions for reaction three. So effectively, we're going from a halogen or alkane to an amine. So that's brought about by ethanolic ammonia. So the reagent is ammonia and the conditions are it has to be in ethanol. And two reaction types. So reaction four, look at what's changed. We've gone from an alcohol to a carboxylic acid. So that's oxidation. And reaction five, we've gone from the ester group has gone to an alcohol group. So effectively, this is broken off here, so it's been hydrolyzed. And the final question, got to identify chiral centers again. I'll use an asterisk this time. I didn't last time, so apologies for that. So we're looking for carbons with four different groups attached. So we've got one there. We've got one there. And we've got one in the ring there.